So today we'll see how to carve a mandibular first molar. Mandibular first molar is almost rectangular in shape. So if you see the diagrams here, this is your rectangle, right? Yeah, this is your rectangle. Okay. So the same thing here. You have a central groove here. So this will be your central groove. Okay. Now what you have to change is you have to done keep this rectangle similar. Okay. Only thing is you have to give little curvature on this area like this. Okay. And remove this. So the tooth will appear like this. So this will be more of a rounded shape. Okay. So this is your triangular fossa here. Divide. Yes. This is lingual. This is buccal. This is distal. And this is mesial. Okay. Now there will be fucus pattern normally. So the, these fucus patterns becomes three on the buccal side, one, two on the lingual side. So that makes a fucus pattern. So lingual you divide into two half, exactly half. Yes, buccal developmental groove will join to the central, and the distal one. The third part will have to carve it from the round angle. This is round angle here. So from this round, from where it is start, from there you have to start. Okay. So one. So this will be the first cusp, second cusp, third cusp, fourth cusp, and fifth cusp. So this is how five cusp pattern will be developed. Now I'll just show you how to go for you. So it will be like this. I'll just drop it here. I'll divide this into half. First, second half. This will go like this, and it will come from here. Okay. So. The triangular fossa over here, it goes straight here like this, okay, and curve here. So this becomes your triangular fossa here. See, the triangular fossa is more shifted towards the lingual side, okay, and here it is in the exactly in the center. So this is lingual side, this is distal side, mesial side, and the buccal side, okay. And ridges are also transverse ridges. Here also transfer, here also transfer. Only distobuccal cusp will come little obliquely. Okay, it comes toward the midpoint here, the, towards the center. Okay, so the shape will be this distobuccal cusp. So this becomes distolingual cusp, distolingual. This is mesiolingual. This cusp, this is distolingual. This becomes mesiobuccal cusp. This becomes buccal cusp or a distobuccal cusp. And this becomes a distal cusp. Okay, so the distal cusp is little shifted towards the distal side, so that is why it's called only distal cusp. Okay, this is more shifted towards the distal side. Okay, this is distobuccal. Yes, because this gives the direction. But the distal cusp is more on the corner, so that is why the triangular fossa is little shifted towards the lingual aspect. Okay, so I'll just show you how to go for it. So this is the block. I have taken it the approximate measurement of an one centimeter. Okay, so that makes the crown, and this becomes the root here. So it has a two root. So first I will decide the direction of the tooth. So I'll consider this as an lingual surface. So I'll write L I there. Okay, so opposite will be buccal. Your B, B is for buccal. So I'll draw this as an mesial side. You can give randomly anywhere. There is no problem. So this will be M, and here it will be distal aspect. Okay. So I will hold it like mesial distal here. This way, I will draw a midline here, like this. Okay. So this will be my future central groove. Okay, this will be the future central groove. This is distal side, so it has to be rounded on this side. So from the midline, just draw it like this, like this. Okay, and you can make it round over here. This way. Okay, you can see this. Yes, this way you have to make just a round here. Okay, so whichever part is remaining on the lingual side, divide into half. Like this, second half will be on the top, and third half will be on the edge from here. Okay, so it will come like this, like this. You can make out 
how the drawing for this okay it's very simple okay then you have a triangular fossa on this side so for triangular fossa just make an little angulated here like this same on the opposite side okay draw triangular fossa first draw a triangle like this and then dig your triangular fossa like this okay but here it will be shifted little on the it will go straight here but little shifted on the distal side okay so make it straight here like this and make the triangular fossa like this okay same on this side so you have ready with the triangular fossa both side triangular fossas are there then the central developmental group uh, this is the central developmental group and this is the buccal developmental group so i make a v shape notch on the buccal developmental group like this okay this is the lingual developmental group like this okay then make all angles rounded so i'll make this all angle rounded here so that it will looks like a rounded cusp okay no sharp edges supposed to be there on any side okay so this become rounded then i will join mesial triangular fossa so i'll join mesial triangular fossa mesial triangular fossa to distal triangular fossa so i will draw a line here direct line i can draw here or i can dig it directly okay till the distal triangular fossa like this okay then you make a inclined plane on each cusp these are the future cusp so make inclined plane on each cusp it has to be a transverse ridge yeah? it will not be an oblique on any side only distal distal clerkus will be little oblique like this i have developed one cusp here i will develop the palatal cusp also then i will develop lingual one i'm making inclined plane over here you can see here five cusp 1 2 3 4 and 5 so i'll make triangular fossa little deep here okay so it will be visible properly yes this becomes triangular fossa i'm just making it clear i'm deepening the central groove here so that the inclination of the cusp inclined plane of the cusp will be little visible prominent i'm making the distal most cusp here you can make out here the distal cusp here this is your triangular fossa some wax has lodged in it so i'm just removing that okay now you can see three cusp side 1 2 3 on one side 1 2 on the lingual side okay so i'm just developing the triangular fossa 
as well as the central groove okay so i'm continuing this central groove here I'm going like this like this and into the triangular fossa okay so i'll just dig the triangular fossa a little bit then i will make inclination more prominent here into the groove this is very roughly done but this the pattern of an occlusal pattern is almost done okay the second step height of contour they are little shifted okay the crown is tilted on the lingual side okay so this is buccal side so from buccal side it has to be tilted a little more so i'm giving tilt here the height of contour i'm maintaining at cervical third you can see here the slope is started from this point okay so this is the cervical third area so from there i'm maintaining the slope and little dig at the lingual side okay so see now the crown is appear to be tilted on the lingual side so once done with this just reduce little bit this becomes so prominent so i'm just trying to reduce the cusp okay so this is done on one side it is done so i'm just making it round all angle i'm trying to make it round okay so this becomes round distal cusp is more on distally so i'm just moving it more on the distal aspect okay so i'm making it more round on the distal lingual side okay so that curvature this curvature will come okay so automatically this curvature will come now almost done so you can make out here these are the triangular fossas here this is the central this is central fossa okay i'm just defining it little clear this is done then this is the mesio buccal cusp this is the mesio distal buccal cusp and this is the distal cusp see now the crown is almost done you can make out three cusp on the lingual side uh, sorry buccal side and two cusp on the lingual side okay then mesio distal dimensions has to be more than the bucco lingual dimension okay i am making taper on the lingual mesial and distal side like this equal taper okay now the developmental groove this mesial uh, lingual developmental groove will come little down here like this not more but yes it is there then you have to make inclined plane on the buccal cusp also okay so almost
can make out here. I'll just dig it here and try to make inclined plane. You can see the ridge here now. You can see the ridge. Yes, that way you have to develop the ridge on each cusp like this. Okay, same on the buckle side. Buckle one, mesial groove is little longer as compared to the distal developmental groove. Okay, so this is distal one. This is shorter and this is little longer. Okay, then again the same thing here. Try to make a ridge on this side. Okay. Then go for root. The crown is almost done here. You can make out the crown is almost done. There is nothing left in the crown. It's just extra wax chip. That is what I am removing. You can see now the prominent bulk of the cusp. Distal one is a smaller one, so it is more on the distal aspect. Then go for root. There are two root. There is a mesial and one distal. Okay. So from the buccal side, just make a bifurcation like this. Same on this side. Bifurcation. Distal root. Is a straight and mesial is curve. Okay, so only at cervical line, just remove the wax. Only at cervical line, not on the root portion here. But here you let it be like this only. Only this portion you make it round, like this. Okay, then then dig from the root area. Or a bifurcation area here. Same on this side. You can perforate from the mesial to distal here. Sorry, buccal to lingual. The root supposed to become taper like this. So I'm removing this portion here. The root taper is supposed to be in the midline of the crown, like this. Okay, so it's supposed to be center here. So I can reduce a little bit from this side also. Okay, just go on rounding. The furcation you can increase little more. I feel there's supposed to be a little more deep furcation.
the distal will be straight You can make out now, the distal becomes very straight here and palatal is little curved, so I will reduce it here. First I will reduce it labiolingually. I'm making it thin and little curve on the apical area. So you can make out the mesial root, this mesial root little curve and this become straight. So I will make it little more prominent here so that you can see it. I'll just polish, polish it from the root surface. The forcation area, I'm just polishing it. Then the side of the root. Be careful, otherwise you, you there is chances of breaking of the root here. Okay, so once the inner portion has been clean, then go for the outer portion. See the room, the whole tooth is almost ready. Only thing is left is cervical line. You can make out the difference between the root here. One becomes straight and one becomes rounded. So distal one will be straight and the mesial one will be the rounded. This is the mesial one. So I can make little more here also. So it will appear as a round here. Like this. Can make out this is rounded this is straight you can move both straight also that is no problem okay then cervical line you have to just draw it like this so 
like this just make a c shape here not more but little little curve here almost straight and here almost round so mesial and distal will have little rounded okay and here it will be straight so just dig it from the lingual side like this then you have to chop it from the crown portion so that becomes little prominent the cervical line will become little prominent so this is how you have to clean it then you can make out here there is a prominent ridge there is a prominent ridge on the buccal surface you can make out this ridge this is little prominent buccal ridge okay see the cusp height mandibular lingual cusp are at higher level than the buccal cusp pattern okay you can reduce the marginal ridge area you can just make it down so that the occlusal table is more visible from the mesial and the distal side now you can see the cusp height these are the flat these are the at higher level you can see the crown tilt little on the lingual side the crown is tilted little more on the lingual side okay two roots mesial is rounded you can make out mesial is rounded distal is straight see the cusp pattern these are the bigger these are these are smaller than this and this is the distal one is more smaller than this okay so this is how you have to make the mandibular first molar just remove the wax chips from inside and make the structure more visible if you use dry cotton there is no need to polish also only thing is you have to remove more chips wax chips from the groove area because they get engaged there so you can remove it like this and you can make it more visible okay so this is how you have to make mandibular first molar thank you